Well, greetings everyone and welcome to the Law Hour and Editorial Review. The Law Hour is sponsored by the Gordon Law School of Isabella, Missouri. Now, the Law Hour is an educational service brought to you in the public interest. I'm your narrator, George Gordon. The Law Hour and Editorial Review is heard nationally and internationally seven days a week here in the United States and in more than 120 countries worldwide daily over the Internet. For more information about the Law Hour and Editorial Review, please visit our webpage at georgegordon.org. Again, that's georgegordon.org. Now, the Law Hour and Editorial Review brings you important information about law, science, education, business, politics, religion, health, history, economics, news, and current events. So stay tuned for tonight's special report on privacy right after this. Hey, let me ask you this. What do you think's wrong with the Ten Commandments? Because it's pretty obvious that something is wrong with the Ten Commandments because they've been banned from our public schools, banned from our public institutions, and banned from our national consciousness. Now, instead of these ten simple time-tested laws, we see the ten planks to the Communist Manifesto. They teach these ten planks to the Communist Manifesto in our schools, our public institutions, and we've made them a part of our national psyche. And that's why I contend that this is a pretty radical change in our political and moral outlook over the past 50 years. Now, are you aware, for instance, that your daughter couldn't receive an aspirin in your public school without your consent, but your daughter can have an abortion arranged through that same public school nurse without even your knowledge? That's why I contend that the solution to this kind of moral perversion and national insanity is to go back to what worked. Let's go back to the Ten Commandments and the Mosaic Law. You know, our founding fathers practiced and advocated the Ten Commandments, and they even put 22 principles of that law into our federal constitution. And there's at least one school left in America that teaches this entire Mosaic Law, the Ten Commandments, and all 759 statutes, judgments, and commandments, as well as the penalties and the 33 benefits for their observance. Now, you know every law has a penalty, and you don't have to know what the penalty to the law is in order to suffer from its effects. So whether we call this the Mosaic Law, the Law of God, the Common Law, Natural Law, or Karma, it's automatic. It works just like AIDS, herpes, and VD, which just happen to be the natural penalties for adultery. Now, if you'd like more information, why don't you call and order our free general law CD package first. That's the place to start. It's a four-hour commentary on the law in general. And it's educational, it's informative, it's entertaining, and best of all, it's free. So you can call and order one right now. The number is 417-273-4967. 417 Once more, that's area code 417-273-4967. Now, if you're online, go to our website, georgegordon.org georgegordon.org you can click on to the the uh, archives page and uh, you can download that free general law CD package right there that's georgegordon.org and then click on to the archives all right we've been talking about uh, <clears throat> privacy and privacy issues you know can you can you have privacy in the computer age and I would contend yeah you, you can have a a reasonable amount of privacy. If we were to go back to 1850, you know, people didn't have total privacy. In fact, I can tell you a little story here. I live out on a farm out in the country. And let me tell you that out here in the country, there's less privacy than there is on the Internet. <laughs> I know, sounds kind of crazy. But here's what happens out here in the country. See, number one, Everybody knows when you're born, and you go to school locally. You go to the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts locally. Every mother within 30 miles of this farm knows me. They know my children. In fact, these places are called the Herd Place, the Smith Place, the Chisholm Place, the Gordon Place. The, the, the land here is named after the people that that live on it or homesteaded it. These people went to the local school. 
If, if you get arrested here in this county, everybody knows it. If you get divorced, everybody knows it. You get married, everybody knows it. It's, it's put in the paper. It's, it's set in the, in the news media. That's our local Ozark County Times. There are no secrets. Gossip runs rampant. Now, I don't know that that's bad. It's, it's just the way of life. You know, that's the way it is. There's not a whole lot that's private. When somebody buys a farm or a piece of land, <laughs> anything that happens over here, my God, it's, it's, it's over here at the coffee clutch. It's down here at uh, Cookies. It's, it's in the restaurants. It's in, the, it's in Skeeter's. I mean, hell, it's in the courthouse. Everybody, everybody knows about it. If you don't pay your taxes before December the 31st, by the 1st of February, the word will be out all over the county that Gordon didn't pay his property tax. He must be going bankrupt. He must be in real financial trouble. They've always paid their taxes on time in the past, but the Gordons haven't paid their property tax. Well, this is year one. Well, if they don't pay their property tax, you know they have three years, and it'll be on the courthouse steps. I mean, it's just it's just the, the way things are when you live out in the, in the country, out on the, on the farm. And, and I accept that, and I don't know that that's necessarily bad, but let me tell you, there's no privacy here. There's less privacy right here in Ozark County than, than there is out here on the Internet or in the police or prisons and all the rest that goes on. The government knows less about me than Bessie Wright. Uh, if the government wants to know about George Gordon, you go down and talk to old Bessie, and by God, she'll tell you, she'll give you the skinny on George Gordon. Now, that's the way life is out here in the countryside. Now, getting back to the real world here that we're dealing with, 63 sources of information that government relies upon, or 63 sources that the government is, uh, is uh, going to be looking at in order to get information about you for whatever reason, good or bad. Um, it's medical records dental records, hospital records, psychiatric records, prescription records, magazine subscriptions, emails, telephone records, bookstore purchases, tax records, that's your federal, tax records, state, and your sales tax records. Your library card records, power company records, garbage company, gas company, genetic information, high school records, grammar school records, college records, military records, welfare records, fish and game licenses, driver's license, traffic records, insurance records, life insurance, medical examination. You know, when you get a life insurance policy, you've got to have a medical exam. They'll get that. Memberships in the NRA, the Republican or Democratic parties, diaries, Charitable contributions, airline reservations, hotel records, magazine subscriptions, newspaper subscriptions, lodge memberships, prison records, your union membership, um, internet accounts, post office box, pager, your addresses, past and present, your landlords, past and present, mortgage company, uh, past and present, social security, Medicare, uh, credit card accounts, license plates, voter registration, your relatives, certifications, church membership, friends, court records, tax records, business records, property records, registrations, business associates, accountants, enemies, and your answering service. They'll go to all or most of those to pick up the information that they need. And indeed, when the, when the FBI is investigating somebody, let's suppose a guy wants to join the military service, and maybe they're going to take him into a top-secret job. Like this guy. They had a guy here that, that is the soldier that collected the WikiLeaks uh, information and then turned it over to WikiLeaks. That guy was investigated by the FBI, and they went through this whole list. Now, let me ask you this. How many times have you heard of a soldier giving away that kind of information, top secret information? 
it is so rare that that happens. Back in the Watergate days, there was a guy named Daniel Ellsberg that did it. And then in our day and age, there's this guy uh, in the Army that did it. The FBI does a hell of a job. They screen people. And, and by God, I'm telling you, when they get through screening you and they approve you for this top service job, you are going to be a government lackey for the rest of your life. You will never deviate from that. It's like being, it's like being a Catholic. I mean, you know, once you're a Catholic, you're a Catholic for life. And old Frank Batten told me one time, he said, well, I'm a recovering Catholic. I'm going to die a Catholic. I was born a Catholic, raised a Catholic, and I'll die a Catholic. But I'm doing everything I can to recover from that handicap. I mean, that's the way it is. They do a hell of a job. Now, when they're after somebody, <clears throat> that's where they're going to go to get the information. Well, now that you know that, and in my business school and in my <clears throat> subsistence and survival school, we actually go through some real-life examples of, well, here's the way you change that. Now, let's take my my bank account. See, I can change that. I, I can't change what happened in the past, but I don't have to put any more bank material out there in the future. They're not going to know what I'm doing in the future. But I can't prevent what I've already done in the past. Now, that they're going to know about. All my tax records in the past, they know about. They just don't know about my tax records in the future. All right. Now, with that in mind, there's 92 identifiers. So you got 63 sources of information and 92 identifiers. And last time, we were going through these 92 identifiers. And I, I was up here to about number 57. Let's see if I got these. Nicknames. Remember, we were up to nicknames. And then there's AKAs, also known as, sometimes called an alias, favorite vacation sites, favorite areas of the country, known foreign languages, especially Spanish or French. Now, let's take these favorite areas of the country. <clears throat> Once we know that your favorite area of the United States is in the Redwood region of California, and the, the, the police are looking for you. See, the, the, the government's looking for you. And especially if they know you hate the desert. You know, you just loathe the desert, but you love the trees, and especially the redwoods. Well, you might locate in Washington State. But you're going to locate where there's trees. You're going to locate where there's forests, and you're going to avoid New Mexico and Arizona. So they're going to concentrate their search up there where there's trees. So if you wanted to thwart that, then what you would do, now that you love the trees and you hate the desert, you'd go to the desert and avoid the trees, wouldn't you? In other words, you need to do something different than what you're doing. So if you're, if you're trade, in other words, everybody knows that you're a machinist. And you sent your mother a, a Mother's Day card from Stockton, California. Hey, partner, you just violated a couple of three basic rules over here. Number one, if you're going to have any contact with mom and dad, here's the way you send mom a, a Mother's Day card. When you're in Denver, Colorado, you drop it in the mail because you're living in Phoenix, Arizona. Now they know that you're in the Denver area because you sent this letter, this card to your mother, you know, say in Burlington, Vermont, and you sent it from Denver, Colorado. So they're going to be looking for you right there in Denver. They're going to be looking for you in Colorado. But where do you really live? Well, Tampa, Florida, or maybe you live in the Amish community in, in Amana, Iowa, or, you know. But you sure as hell don't want to mail it from a man or Tampa if that's where you're living, do you? You see, when Elijah was on the lamb, he was hiding in the wilderness with this widow lady over here. Now, the, the government, the king and the queen, this is Ahab and Jezebel, they're looking for this guy. If they catch Elijah, they're going to kill him. They're going to execute him. He's the number one terrorist in Israel in those days. A couple, three times they were after Jesus and and then he, uh, he escaped from them. And then a couple of places he said, and he would not 
teach in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. You know, there was a time there when he had to quit. He had to get the hell out of Dodge. You know, he, he was on the lamb. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Jesus was on the lamb from the, from the Pharisees, the government. The government was after him. And so he did not teach among the Jews. He taught among the Samaritans and others, but he had to, he had to watch out where he was and where he was going. So you tuck that one away in your heart. The uh, known foreign languages, you know, maybe you know Spanish or French, but you better keep your mouth shut from now on concerning those languages. Addictions to alcohol, drugs, and gambling. Hey, listen, people that are addicted to alcohol, drugs, and gambling typically can't change that, but if you could change that, it would help you a great deal, wouldn't it? Hobbies, you know, what are your hobbies? You like to ski? Is that your favorite sport? Well, they're going to be looking in the wintertime at every ski resort. Hey, keep your eyes open for Gordon. He likes to ski. Favorite sports and sports teams. Well, are you a Yankees fan at the World Series? Are you going to be in Yankee Stadium cheering the team on? Zodiac signs, especially if if you're uh, occult and practice astrology. Your occupation or occupations which you have training for, boy, that's a hard one to get away from because, like I said, you know, if you're a truck driver, you're probably going to be looking for work driving truck. But if you're a truck driver, you want to be looking for work and working in a machine shop. If you're a machinist, you want to be a truck driver. you got to change your occupation, change your profession. Organizational membership, fraternal organizations, you know you're a, men- you're a member of of a Phi Data Cap, something rather, you know. Uh, boy, you want to stay as far away from that as you can get. Schools that you attended. Are you going to go to your class reunion? <clears throat> we had a guy one time, he was up in uh, Jackson County, Michigan. He was pretty funny. His, he, he had a twin brother. And uh, this twin, now both of them didn't come down here to law school, but one of them did. And this, uh, he, he's, he's an older fellow, you know, they're probably 50 years old at the time. And uh, he called me one day and he says, hey, uh, I got a warrant out for my arrest. Or it was his brother, I guess, had the warrant out for his arrest. Yeah, that's what it was. It was his brother had the warrant out for his arrest. And his brother was having his 25th wedding anniversary. It was a silver wedding anniversary, so they advertised it in the paper. And we're going to have a big shindig, you know, over here at the Veterans Memorial uh, Lodge and so on. And so this guy said, I'll just bet you that the cops are going to come pinch him right here and break up the party and, and wreck his 25th wedding anniversary and so on. And he said, uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go sit in I'm going to take his place. These guys are twin brothers. He says, I'm going to take his place with his wife as the guest of honor. And uh, I think they're going to come in and arrest me. I said, well, that sounds like a pretty good sting to me. And sure enough, that's what happened. So they arrested this guy. And they hauled him off to jail. He's in jail 32 days. He calls me on the phone. And he says, hey, is 32 days long enough? I said, yeah, I think that that would uh, that, that probably do it. They made a pretty good settlement. It was an out-of-court settlement for false arrest and false imprisonment under the Civil Rights Act up in Jackson County, Michigan. That was a that was a pretty pretty neat sting, I thought. And so here again, you know, sometimes you know you can anticipate the police and what they're going to do and make it pay. That was payday for him. All right, now your religious beliefs and/or affiliations. Hey, you know, you got to watch that because if you're uh, if you're tied into a particular church, then and, and and you're known to be religious, then you're going to do certain things that that church does. So they're going to be looking at every church in the country. They'll call the cops. You know, they'll put out an all points bullet and they'll say, "Hey, we're looking for this guy," and uh, he belongs to the um, Adventist church. So we know he's going to be in church on Saturday. And then here's this particular holiday, whatever you Advents practice. And uh, that's what we're after, and they'll be looking for you, see. So now that you know that, you know you've got to be alert to that. 
Now, your police records, military records, court records, your tax records, business records, utility records, insurance company records, medical records, telephone company records, bank records, credit card records, creditors listing, credit history, property records, you know, lists from your county assessor and all that. Well, all of those records in the past, there's nothing that you're ever going to do to erase or change those records. But every one of those records can be changed in the future. Every one of them. So in the future, when you're buying and selling land, when you're, when you're applying for credit, creditors' listings, credit card records, bank records, telephone company records, you know, we're going to do something different. Guy came through here one day and he couldn't find me. So when he got home, he called me. See, our telephone number's right up here. The, and he said, well, I was, I came through Isabella, Missouri, and I couldn't find you. I called you on the phone. There wasn't any answer. And so I came on back home. And I didn't know how to find you. And I was out looking. Well, that's because... Uh, my name isn't on the post office box, and my name ain't on the power bill, and my name ain't on the telephone bill. And, you know, there's some things in life that, that you don't need, you know. So, I mean, I, I use electric lights, and I use a telephone, but they're not mine. So, you know, again, if you use your head, you want to be private, and you, you won't, don't want people to know about you or where you live or what you're doing. I mean, you'd have a hard time finding me here. I'm pretty well known. I mean, if you ask the right guy, he can tell you right where my front gate is. But if you're just looking here in the telephone book, you know, or you're stopping over here at the gas station saying, hey, I'm looking for George Gordon, I mean, you, you probably wouldn't find me. I mean, right here in the county. Now, most of the locals, you know, that are around the local area could tell you where the Gordon place is, but... Anyway, that guy couldn't find me, and I was a little bit surprised. I said, well, you know, out here in the countryside where most people know me, why well, you'd think you'd be able to find me, but this guy couldn't do that. And he was looking for the conventional things, you know, the, the telephone directory. I'm not listed in the telephone directory. So, there. My number is not unlisted. It's in the telephone book. But when you look under George Gordon, it's not there because George Gordon doesn't have telephone. I'm using somebody else's. All right. So now with that in mind, keep that under your hat there. Number 72 through 84. There's people that they're going to go talk to. Next, they compile as complete a list of potential contacts as possible. They're looking for your parents, step-parents, spouses, current, separated or divorced, or significant others. Could be your mistress. Siblings, brothers and sisters, friends, roommates, mistresses or their male equivalent, business partners, personal doctors, persons you owe money to, persons that owe you money, accountants, enemies, in case they find you first or have useful information. So they go talk to these people. There's a list of people. So the, the FBI agent comes in at town and says, well, who's George Gordon's accountant? Who are people that owe George Gordon money or that he owes money to? They want to go talk to your creditors. They want to talk to your enemies. They want to talk to your children. They want to talk to your brothers and sisters and your friends and anybody they can. And they, they can pose in a number of different guises to get the confidence of the people that they're talking to. Now, the guy that they're talking to may be your best friend and he wouldn't do anything he could to blow your cover or to cause you any grief at all. And when he gets through talking to the cops, <laughs> the cops will know everything that's between his ears. He has no secrets. He's been to public school. He's been to the first grade. He doesn't know how to keep a secret. The average American boys and girls couldn't keep their secrets if their lives depended on it. And now you've got Twitter and Facebook for people that have no secrets. Now, let me tell you, the FBI has lots of secrets. 
You don't know the FBI's telephone numbers and pager numbers and answering service numbers or the president. I mean, the president of the United States has got to be the most public guy on planet Earth. He's got a guy that walks around with him every day, 365 days a year, taking his pictures. It was just on PBS the other night. It's the official White House photographer. In fact, I think they got three of them. This is your tax dollars at work. And they just follow the president around taking pictures of him all day long, day and night, everywhere he goes. If, he, if, if this guy goes to the head, they take a picture of him. Now, they don't publish all of those pictures, but they, they've got pictures. Now, listen, does the president have some privacy? Now, he's over in Hawaii right now, and they've got a press corps over there that follows him around. And one day, he turns up over in Afghanistan. It was totally secret. And, and one day, he just uh, pops up, and he says, hi, guys, I'm here. He's he's at a meeting at 6.45 in the evening, and the next morning at 8 o'clock, he's in Kabul, Afghanistan, on Air Force One. Isn't that special? And nobody knows. And the press corps is sitting there. Well, the last time we saw him was at this meeting last night, and then he left and went to bed. And this morning, we uh, woke up and found out uh, that he's in uh, Afghanistan. Now, the, the, the CIA, they keep their secrets pretty damn well, and the FBI does too. The government keeps its secrets right out in front of everybody. Now, could you learn how to keep your secrets right out in front of everybody? Sure you can. Sure you can. And here at the law school, we'll show you how to do that. It's our business school. Write this down. It's business school. And uh, subsistence and survival. You got two schools here that aim at uh, two different subject matters, but we cover the subject matter of uh, of uh, personal security, privacy. And again, as I pointed out, you know, let's take a look at your tax records. You know, you filed a tax return. I did back in 1975. I filed a tax return. That's public information. Hell, that thing's going to be there. I'll, I'll be dead 200 years from now, and that record will still be there in the IRS office in Washington, D.C., or Ogden, Utah, I guess is where it was. It's there. It's done. And there isn't anything I'm ever going to do about that record. But they don't have a tax return for 1985, 92, or 2000. And, then, and and I ain't talking and I ain't telling and I don't keep any records and, and I'm not breaking any laws. You know, if you're working for the IRS, you know, well, get after it. I'm, I'm not a tax protester. I, I pay all the tax. Every, everything I owe, my property taxes are paid up and my but I'm not uh, I'm not bragging about it and, I, and I'm not out here uh, telling you where it's at. I was in court the other day. Some guy said uh, you wanted to. Oh, I know what it was. He said uh, I sold him a piece of ground. He said I don't own, didn't own it. So I went in there and I proved that I owned that piece of ground. And I was talking to an attorney a little while later. And uh, this is about the third case I've done now on this land. And this lawyer looked at me and he said, "How much land do you own?" And I said, "Well, I don't rightly know, and I." Ain't telling you. So they got over there in the courthouse and they're looking over there in the land records and they couldn't find any land anywhere that George Gordon had recorded. And they said, well, huh, in that case, he don't own this piece of ground over here. So here's what we're going to do. And I said, well, if that's what you want to do. You get after it. You know, this thing of recording all of your deeds and recording everything that you own, filling out bank statements. You know, I used to I used to do business at the bank, and the bank every six months would invite me in and have me fill out a financial statement. It was like going to confession, you know, on Thursday night, and you tell them everything that you own. Well, they got a scam going around right now, and this lady was at the Feast of Tabernacles. 
and she showed me this this new scam. I don't know what the hell it is, straw man or redemption or whatever the hell it is, but it's one of those Mickey Mouse tax protest deals, and you know you don't like to be rude to people, and so I said, well, I don't think I want to participate in that, and she wanted to know well what I thought of it and one thing and another, so I read some of it and I said, well, it's snake venom and ma- mouse milk. And there was a page in there, or two, and these people are supposed to list everything that they own. I mean, they list everything that they own, then they go down and they file it. I can't think of anything better for an IRS agent to do than to get you to list everything that you own. Right down to your toothbrush and the comb you carry in your back pocket and and a dirty handkerchief, you know, in your shirt. And they got it all listed. Now they know exactly what you own, where it's at, and uh, where to go lean it and take it away from you. There was a bag lady they got not too long ago. She died. And they got to prowling around looking through her stuff. And they found $220,000. $220,000 in cash in her stuff. And this lady's living under a bridge called her a bag lady. Who would suspect? I mean, what robber would go down and rob somebody living in a in a Salvation Army, you know, rescue mission or or uh, or down here? Nobody would suspect such a thing. And here's this lady. She's got a small fortune there at her hand, and now she's out picking up this and that. Do you think this lady was filing her tax returns every year? She's got two hundred and twenty grand in her shopping cart, living under a bridge. And uh, I'll bet you that that lady was out here selling uh, uh, aluminum cans and she wasn't declaring her income. You know that? I just bet you. And I'm sitting here saying, well, more power to you, lady. And I'm sorry that you died before you got to spend your 220000 And I hope you were real happy collecting it. Hey, I've got to give you a reminder here that you are listening to the Law Hour and Editorial Review. We're sponsored by the Gordon Law School of Isabella, Missouri. And the Law Hour is heard seven days a week here in the United States. And we're heard around the world in more than 120 countries daily over the Internet and radio. Now, if you'd like more information about the Law School and the Law Hour, please go to your website, or our website, rather, uh, to georgegordon.org. Now, the Law School teaches family law, tax law, courtroom strategy and procedure, business law, agricultural law, civil rights, and biblical law from the scriptural perspective. Now, that's eight schools in all. The Law School is a private, non-commercial, non-profit, non-sectarian law school, and it's open to individuals but by prearrangement. Now, the Law School conducts a homeschooling program for adults on Compact Desk, and the Law Hour website is updated weekly. And it has our radio log schedule and archives, and all of that can be accessed through our website at georgegordon.org. Now, all of these Law Hour programs are archived on the Internet by title and date for your listening convenience. The Law Hour is an educational service brought to you in the public interest, and the Law School offers a free four-hour introductory CD package. Now, be sure to order one by calling the Law School and asking for it. The number is 417 273-4967. Now, again, that's area code 417-273-4967. Now, while you're at it, if you're online, you can go to our website, georgegordon.org, click onto the archives page, and you can download that free general law CD package right there. The sources of information that we use on this program are true, accurate, and correct to the best of our knowledge and belief. And the Law Hour and Editorial Review gives credit to those authors and publications that we use on this program. We often endorse or recommend books, papers, periodicals, newsletters to our listeners. And these endorsements, these recommendations that we give, don't mean that the authors or publications that we're endorsing are necessarily going to reciprocate. Keep in mind that most of these authors and publications that we cite here on the Law Hour and Editorial Review, they may be hostile political, religious, economic, sectarian, racial, or ethnic partisans, and their viewpoints may not be totally endorsed by the Law Hour and Editorial Review either. These opinions, beliefs, comments, views, and expressions that you hear on this program are mine and mine alone, 
and they don't necessarily represent the views, beliefs, or the opinions of the advertisers, the sponsors, the management, or the staff of this radio network or of this local radio station. If you'd like more information about the Law School, the Law Hour, or the Editorial Review, please go to our website, georgegordon.org, or call us direct at 417-273-4967. Hey, there was a story came out of Europe. <clears throat> Tuck this one away in your heart, and let me, let me explain it. <clears throat> General... George Patton had slapped a soldier in Sicily. He was relieved of his command, and he was sent up to England, and he was he was preaching to the choir. He's up there preaching to, to uh, old ladies and one thing and another. And uh, <clears throat> time was going on, 1943, 1944. And... Uh, <clears throat> the... Uh, the Germans were flying airplanes, you know, reconnaissance airplanes over England, and the English were building up this uh, this uh, phantom uh, army, and they were using plywood and uh, and uh, rubber and balloons, and uh, they had a big big area outside London, and and uh, every day the Germans would fly over, and all the anti-aircraft fire would open up. And uh, they'd shoot down an airplane or two. But the British were, were ordered never shoot down all of the reconnaissance airplanes. Always make sure that one of them escapes. And so they did. And this went on, you know, for years and months. And, and so the Germans, they keep taking pictures. And this phantom army is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know. <clears throat> and uh, they're taking pictures and... and uh, and uh, they're shooting their airplanes out of the sky, but they always want them getting away, and it goes back to Germany, and, and then they're looking at the pictures, and they're they're trying to figure out what the Americans and the British are doing. See? And meanwhile, George Patton, he's he's over here talking to old ladies and one thing and another, and and uh, and he's got this little ugly dog that he takes around with him, you know. And, now, the Germans know that this guy, Patton, is the top general in the American army. I mean, this guy is is the Erwin Rommel of the Americans. And they're sitting over there saying, there's no way in hell that they're going to that they're gonna take their top general out of operation. They said, this is a ruse. This is phony. This guy, Patton, is going to lead the American army when they attack Europe. And so, you know, the Americans are building up their forces, and the Americans and the British, you know, they're doing all this. Well, one day, they actually do it, June 6th. Now, the Germans thought that the attack was going to come at Calais, and it did, and it came at Normandy. So, the, the Germans have their army and their forces, and they're pretty mobile. And if they had applied what they knew and what they saw at the time they knew and saw it, at Normandy, if they'd have just brought their army down, they could have thrown the Americans that first day or two or three right back into the ocean. But they didn't act for three days. And the reason that they didn't act for three days is that this big military force that's being built up they, on, on, on June 6th, this Normandy, uh, Normandy D-Day, they flew over there and that whole army is in place. It, it hasn't been moved. And they checked to find out where General Patton was, and he was out preaching to a bunch of old ladies. And they came to the conclusion, this isn't the main, this is not the attack on Europe that we're all expecting. This is a feint. So they kept their army in place. Well, three days later, by the time they woke up to the fact that the real invasion had taken place on June 6th, 7th, and 8th, and it had taken place at Normandy, they lost their window of opportunity. Now, this is called disinformation. In other words, information is important, but disinformation can oftentimes be even more important. It's where you lead your opponent to believe ABC, but you're really working on ZYX. 
Now that can be a very, very valuable tool for you as a person, just an individual, when your government is attacking you or when you think they might be. You know, if if the government were attacking you at ABC, but the real problem was ZYX, well then, what the hell's the problem? And this is what we call rabbit trail. Rabbit trail. And then you want your opponent to be on the rabbit trail. You don't want them on your trail. You want them on some rabbit trail. And that was a classic example I learned from that many years ago. And I said, oh, that really works well. So the Germans thought that the attack was going to be led by General Patton. Well, the Americans are sitting over there saying, well, of course, the, the logical thing to do is for Patton to be leading this army. He's our best general. And the minute that General Patton gets out here and starts leading it, they'll know exactly where we're attacking. And they'll go right down there and throw us right into the ocean. And that's because it takes a few days to get enough stuff ashore that you can hold your beachhead. So the Americans outfoxed the, the, the Germans by building up this phantom army and all these trucks and tanks and all this stuff and keeping General Patton right out there in the spotlight so that they could see right where the general is. And the general ain't leading this op operation down here at Normandy, which is, you know, 150 miles away from from where the Germans are. And so the Germans are sitting there saying, well, we're waiting for Patton. By the time they woke up to the fat, fact that they got snookered, it was too late for them. Now, tuck that one away in your heart because it's important. Now, here's a list of significant dates that will also be compiled, which will be used to determine the most likely contact times for each person. These will include Mother's and Father's Day, yearly anniversaries, that's yours, your parents, your siblings, and your friends. Significant years, such as family and class reunions and golden wedding and silver wedding anniversaries. That's number 87. Remember, I told you about the guy that was having the silver wedding anniversary? And so the two brothers, they're sitting there saying, well, I'll bet you that the cops will come in here and bust that up. That being the case, how should we conduct ourselves? So the real brother, who's having the wedding anniversary, he splits and leaves the scene. He's nowhere to be found. The brother who's clean as a hound's tooth ain't looking for him. He, he gets up there with the, with the wife of his brother. This is his sister-in-law. And they're cutting the cake and acting like, you know, it's a husband and wife and having a good time. The cops, sure enough, they bust in and they arrest this guy and haul him off to jail. Hell, that's the wrong guy. So, you know, here you are. And that's life. And you know, you do what you got to do. Cops got to do what they got to do, and you got to do what you got to do, and, you know, we play the game out and see how, how the score tallies up. Number 88, Christmas and Easter, or the equivalent religious holidays, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, or whatever it might be, 4th of July, Labor Day, other traditional vacation holidays, birthdays, Thanksgiving, significant medical dates, such as checkups, appointments, prescriptions, all right, now, I mentioned this thing of Mother's Day. You know, you're probably not going to forget your mother. Now, all of these anniversaries, you know, when you do this, you know, you want to make sure that uh, when you mail off the cards or presents or whatever you're doing, that you lead your opponent down a rabbit trail. And so, you know, you go out to Phoenix, Arizona, and you mail this stuff, and that says to everybody, well, it must be in or around Phoenix. No, that's, that's where you're... Is it inconvenient? Well, of course it is. It's inconvenient as hell to travel from Tampa, Florida, where your real location is, and then go to Phoenix, Arizona to mail off a Mother's Day card to your mother. But you mail that thing from Tampa, and you just told every cop in the country, every government agent and agency in the country, hey, I'm, I'm headquartered in Florida, and more particularly in Tampa. Now they don't have to spread their resources out looking for you in Helena, Montana. <clears throat> now they know you're not in Montana. They, they got you pinpointed. 
So again, you know, here comes that rabbit trail. Start thinking about that. Now, we would hope that the government isn't looking for us, wouldn't we? I mean, you know, we don't want we don't want the government chasing us around. Well, neither did Elijah, neither did Jesus, neither did Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, or Daniel. But you know, that's where life's at. You know, the 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 Hooterites, they didn't want the government coming after them and killing them, putting them to death, but you know, that's that's life. That's what it is. And those events that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, they're going to come down on all of us again. He promised that that's the way it was going to be. He said there's going to be tribulation like you've never seen on planet Earth. Daniel told us that in Daniel 12. Jesus told that in Matthew 24. Moses told us that in Deuteronomy 28. Come on, you know, we've we got more than one witness here. So it's time to wake up then start preparing for it. And then make yourself a smaller target. See if you can't stay out of the road. The train's coming down the tracks. Let's get off the tracks. That's all. A little common sense goes a long way. Now, with these items and a method to sort through the information to seek patterns, anyone can be caught if they continue to follow the same patterns. It may take some time, but has an extremely high probability of success. For example, the police know your parents' 50th wedding anniversary is coming up on the 20th of June. They can now make plans for small intercepts, phone taps, on the theory that you're unlikely to pass by such a significant date without some kind of contact. Or if you're on a specific uh, medical regime, particularly if it involves rare drugs or expensive treatment, such as Osama bin Laden, for instance. Do you remember that? Osama bin Laden was over in Abu Dhabi, I believe it was. He was visited by the CIA station chief right there in the hospital. He was in there for dialysis. Do you remember the story? Mm -hmm. The, the American authorities could have nabbed that guy any time they wanted. Osama bin Laden is a uh, CIA agent. Just like that, uh, that guy from Panama. What was his name? That uh, He was a... I've forgotten his name now. but Anyway, he was the president of Panama, and they caught him and locked him up in jail for a while. Manuel Noriega. Remember that? You know, Adolf Hitler was a part of the conspiracy, and they had a body that was charred, you know. And I'm not sure that Adolf Hitler died there at the bunker. That was the cover start. Adolf Hitler was a 33rd degree Mason. He was a Jesuit. He was an insider. He was leading the other side of synthesis, anti-synthesis. Osama bin Laden. He's part of the CIA. He's a part of the program. He's the synthesis, anti-synthesis. Notice they never catch him. He's just always a step ahead of them. Just can't figure out. Hell, the station chief comes over there and they're having a conversation. Could have nabbed him any time they wanted. They didn't. Now, we're not supposed to hear about that. But you know... Even the even the insiders foible once in a while, like pulling building number seven when the airliner crashed in Pennsylvania and they didn't get the airplane to crash into it. So then they had to knock it down anyway and then come up with this phony cover story. Well, anybody with a half a brain past 70, you know, if your IQ is above 70, knows it takes six weeks. It sure as hell takes longer to wire up a building to blow it up. Then from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon, especially when the damn thing's on fire, doesn't it? I mean, come on, anybody can figure out that that's phony. Well, then what else is phony that goes along with it? So, tuck that one away in your heart. Or if you're on a specific medical regimen, regimen particularly if it involves rare drugs or expensive treatments like dialysis, 
they can track down every person receiving that kind of medical treatment or drug. Any use of identification accounts, etc., that they might have access to is liable to be used to narrow down the search area. It's like playing 20 questions. First thing we need is to, is to narrow the search area down and get him isolated, get him located in California. Okay, well, now we know where he's at in California. We don't know where he's at, but we know he's in California. Well, that eliminates 50 other states, doesn't it? If you have an AOL account and log on, they can tell what city you're in, sometimes even what neighborhood. A significant bonus for any searcher. Even, even lesser uses like phone calling cards can tell your opponent what state you're in which can allow them to ignore the vast majority of the country. Now, there are many items on this list which you can't do anything about. Not too many people can make themselves taller, for example, and Osama bin Laden can't make himself any shorter. I think he's about, is, is that guy seven foot tall or six foot six or eight or something like that? I mean, that guy would stand out anywhere, wouldn't he? But even here, you can do a lot to slow down a potential invasion of your privacy. The less items on that list they have access to, then the less their chances of matching up a pattern. If you're obviously from the Deep South, there's probably not much you can do to disguise your drawl. But you don't have to confirm that. It's you by always driving a red Dodge pickup with a bumper sticker saying, Confederates do it better. Now, if, you know, just as an illustration here, let's suppose that you've got this Texas drawl. And you move to California. You know, that you're going to stand out like a sore thumb there. So, if you've got this Texas accent, then you'd do better if you were in, uh, oh, you know, Mississippi, Alabama. It, it, it isn't as good as, you got 50 states to get lost in here, you know, if you can speak English, but the Apostle Peter in the scripture, this guy came up to him and he said to Peter, he said, your speech doth betray you. Remember when he said, I don't know that guy? He, he denied that he knew Jesus and, he, and, and this, this guy, this guard said, hey, your speech... Your Texas accent, Peter, betrays you. So you need to take that into account. Now, either get rid of your Texas accent, which probably isn't going to happen. And then the next step in the scenario is, well, then why don't you get yourself lost in Texas? Why don't you get yourself lost over here where you're going to fit right in with everybody else? You know, if you're a black man... And then you want to get lost in the United States of America? And you, and you want to get lost? Do you want to go to Bismarck, North Dakota? You want to go to Kalispell, Montana? Where the last time they had a black man through there was in 1947? Or do you want to get lost in Detroit, Michigan? Or maybe uh, Miami, Florida? Or, 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 you know, come on, wake up and smell the coffee here. You're Chinese. You know, go get lost in Chinatown in Oakland, California. Now, of course, that's going to tell your opponent if they're looking for an Oriental, they're going to be looking for this Oriental probably around the Orientals. It's in Chinatown, but there's less chance they're going to find you in Chinatown than Bismarck, North Dakota. I mean, come on. All right, so tuck that one away in your heart. <clears throat> the key is that many of the most obvious descriptors and the most easily searchable are linked to some form of a number. The less numbers you have linked to you, the harder any search becomes. And the harder a search becomes, the less likely it will be anything other than a casual attempt to find information. People, especially in the lower ranks of law enforcement, can be amazingly lazy. If it's too much trouble, they'll just drop the matter once they're convinced that it's you. However, if all of the information is dumped in their lap on a silver platter, they're like any four-year-old in a candy shop. They'll go rummaging around, and it's precisely this rummaging, whether by law enforcement or private citizens, 
or skip tracers or bill collectors that has led to the huge increase in identity theft. People are stealing everything from cell phone numbers to credit card numbers to whole identities. That's sad. And what's sad about it is that all of this information is obtained directly or in, indirectly from you. You're the one that's given it to them. So, you know, just, just protecting your privacy, just leaving out the issue of the Hooterites or the government after you, just the average Joe Sixpack criminal over here that wants to steal your identification or your identity so that he can use it for his own personal profit at your expense is reason enough for you to protect your person, your papers, your houses, and your effects. Our founding fathers decided that that was a good policy. I'm sure that the King of England looked at him and said, Boy, those colonists are a bunch of damn terrorists. They're over there teaching these people that they should be private, that they should have privacy, that they should have constitutional rights, that they should have a constitutional amendment that protects their person, houses, papers, and effects. Well, hell, we've gone full circle. That's where George Bush is. That's where Barack Obama and your Attorney General, especially that John Ashcroft, I mean, these guys are trying to uncover every secret that you've got, including a pimple on the end of your end of your nose. You know, it's time to <clears throat> time to rein that in, and you have to do that personally and privately. If you think the bank is going to protect your privacy, or that your business associates they, they they'll protect my privacy, you can forget that. My old daddy told me one time. He said, "If you know a secret." And you don't tell anybody else, that's a secret. And the minute you tell that to one other person, that's not a secret anymore. So simple as simple that is. All right, now the following is a pretty complete listing of the various places where numeric identifiers of yourself can be found. Consider this the advanced version of the list below, likely to be used in the event of a truly thorough dredging of your life. Driver's licenses, DMV records, includes driving record, vanity plates, personal ID from non-governmental ID, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, SSI, bank accounts, insurance policies, mortgages and bank loans, consumer debt payment plan and accounts, credit, debt, ATM, and smart cards. Telephone, cell phone numbers, power, gas, water, telephone records, online accounts, cable or satellite TV, radio, census information. You know, people give out census information, voter registration, magazines, books, and online subscriptions, financial statements, employment records, business records. Medical, dental records, military and ID records, psychiatric records, birth certificates, marriage licenses, divorces, church records, organizational memberships such as church, labor union, lodge, school records, diplomas, college, all of that, firearms registration, security clearances, court records, online search engines, online physical phone directories, sales slips and bills. Even your trash can, even your garbage can can be used to find information against you and be used against you. Just ask the mafia. They know. Well, that's about the end of that uh, program, <clears throat> talking about privacy. I'm about out of time, so i got to give you a final reminder here that you have been listening to the Law Hour and Editorial Review that were sponsored by the Gordon Law School of Isabella, Missouri. Now, the Law Hour is heard seven days a week here in the United States and in more than 120 countries daily over the Internet and radio. If you'd like more information about the Law School and the Law Hour, please go to our website. That's georgegordon.org. Now, the law school is a private, non-commercial, non-profit, non-sectarian law school, and it is open to individuals but by prearrangement. 
Now the Law School conducts a homeschooling program for adults on Compact Disc, and the Law Hour website is updated weekly and has our radio log schedule and archives. All of that can be accessed through our website at georgegordon.org. All of these Law Hour programs are archived on the Internet by title and date. That's for your listening convenience, and the Law Hour is an educational service brought to you in the public interest. Well, that's the signal. Says my time's up. I've got to leave it right there, so we'll see you back here tomorrow night. Same time, same station, God willing, of course. So until then, thanks for listening, everybody, and good night, friends. <laughs>